Hey guys, this is your fiery friend the Inferno Man here, and if you're into games, you're right where you need to be. But before we get into it, if you like the content that I put out there, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit me up with a like, or even better, subscribe to me. It really shows that people do care about my content. Now, if you have questions, comments, stuff you'd like to see played or discussed, you can at me on Twitter or chat directly with me as I stream two to three times a week on Twitch. A visual link for those are up on the screen right now, and I will have direct links in the details below. And for today's deck tech, we're going to be going over a budget version of Azorius Control. If you obviously don't know already, Azorius Control is a very powerful deck that's currently running in the format. And I'm pretty sure there are some players out there that would love to play this deck, but don't want to spend that many wild cards. Now, again, as always, if you guys don't know how we do this, first we will cover the creatures in the deck, then we'll cover the non-creature spells, then we will go over the land base, we will then go over the sideboard, and of course, have a match against Sparky to spar and show you how to use the deck. And of course, at the very end of the video, a way to upgrade into the full Azorius control. But aside from that, let's go ahead and show you how you can control the board using only, again, less than 10 rares and mythics. All right? So to begin, we actually only have one creature in the entire deck. And it's not even in the main deck. We actually have this in the sideboard. But I still want to talk about it anyway. So you have Dream Trawler. Dream Trawler is going to be your 6 mana 3-5 Sphinx with Flying and Lifelink. Whenever you draw a card, it gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Whenever the Dream Trawler attacks, you draw a card. Discard a card, and Dream Trawler will gain Hexproof until end of turn, and then you tap it. Simply put, the only reason why we have this in the sideboard is, once your opponent figures out that you're a control deck, they're mostly going to be sideboarding out all of their removal and mostly their rats. So this allows you to bring in Dream Trawler from the sideboard to be your main win con. But aside from that, <laughs> that's all I got for you for the creatures. You technically have some non-creature spells that produce creatures, but we'll get to that in a little bit. All right. Anyway, let's get to the fun part of control, <laughs> the non-creature spells. And here we are, 34 cards for the non-creature spells. Hey, it wouldn't be control if you didn't have ways of managing the board. Am I right? Am I right? Ah, okay. So here we go. Soul Guide Lantern's going to be your one drop that's going to be here just for Graveyard Hate. You'll be using Sensor, Neutralize, Sod Coming, and copies of 4, 3, and 2 respectively. Sod Coming is great in the early game because you can foretell it and just save it for later. Neutralize and Sensor have the advantage of being cycled if you don't need a counter spell at that moment, or if you're, maybe your opponent already has an empty hand. Use Baffling In and Cast Out for your spot removal. Baffling In, of course, is for creatures. Cast Out, you can use for creatures, but it's mostly going to be for the bigger stuff. You mostly want to save this for the enchantments or the planeswalkers or the artifacts that you have trouble dealing with. The advantage, of course, is Cast Out versus other enchantment options out there is it has Flash. So we can Flash in at the end of an opponent's turn if we need to. And also, it cycles when we don't need it. You'll be utilizing four Wraths, three Wrath of God, and one Doom Scar. The reason why that you want to set it up in this ratio is Wrath of God, although it is four mana, and in theory you could be foretelling with Doomscar to make it a lot easier to cast, there's going to be moments where you might need something on the spot, and four mana for Wrath of God versus five mana for a Doomscar could mean the difference between surviving a hit or losing the game. Depose and Deploy. Only two copies of this, but it's a great flex card for our budget deck. Being able to tap a creature and draw a card to replace itself is nice, but also the Deploy is sometimes really helpful in a pinch. The ability to gain two life off of two 1-1 one -one Thopters is also good because you can make sure that you can survive even one more hit, put up some chump blockers, or maybe finish off a weak Planeswalker on the end of an opponent's turn. Two copies of Narset and Search for Escanta are going to be here to fix your draws and find you the answers you need to take out an opponent's creatures either with wraths get your spot removal or a counter spell ready to go not to mention of course i don't have to say it but narset's static ability is really annoying to deal with so if the longer it stays out versus an opponent the more you can prevent them from getting the card advantage over you and finally our major payoffs ominous seas and teferi three copies of teferi four copies of ominous seas so you notice how a lot of our Spot removal and counter spells have cycling abilities. This is why we're using Ominous Seas. It's a great budget option. Unfortunately, the Krakens cannot be protected with what we have unless if we really want to use counter spells for it. But the whole point of it is just to put down some imminent threat that our opponent has to answer at some point. 
Of course, your main way of winning is going to be Teferi. Teferi, of course, needs no introduction. You're drawing cards with it, untapping your lands to ensure you have mana up to keep counterspelling your opponent or possibly using cast out for spot removal. And if by some miracle you can get to that minus eight, you basically have won the game. There's very rare of a chance you're ever going to get to that ultimate ability, but Teferi is mostly here just to prevent your opponent from either overrunning you or to make sure that you do have some way of protecting yourself by keeping mana up. But that's basically it. I know. Zori's control, guys. You don't really need much to explain for it, except, obviously, you're playing no fun allowed. All right, let's go over your lands. Now, as far as your mana base is concerned, no surprise, you're using a lot of the tap lands, so just upgrade these as soon as you can. Islands and plains, they don't have to be snow covered. This is just my personal preference. One copy of Lonely Sandbar, one copy of Secluded Step. Your only rare land that you have is going to be Castle Ardenvale. Being able to create a 1-1 human when you have mana open is going to be great, and it does put a tiny bit of pressure on your opponent. The longer the game goes, the more frustrating it's going to be for your opponent who has to deal with these little tokens. But otherwise, that's going to be it for you guys for the lands. I know, nothing special. A lot of taps, but Azorius Control actually does pretty decently even with a lot of tap lands. So you will be able to maintain. Just hang in there in the early game, and by the mid and late game, you will have what you need to take over your opponent. All right, time for the sideboard. And as for your current sideboard, as always, like I tell you, please make sure to adjust your sideboard based on the meta. I know, blah, blah, blah. You guys have heard this many times from me, but I'm going to keep reminding all y'all. An extra copy of Baffling End, one copy of Seal Away, just as a, think of it as a fifth copy of Baffling End, Disdainful Stroke for the bigger spells that we have to deal with. One copy of Essence Scatter. Three Dovin's Veto. Two Timely Reinforcements. Mostly this is just your other way of getting a pseudo creature on the field in the form of three White Soldier creature tokens. And being able to gain life if you have less life than your opponent really can put a swing back in your favor. Three more counter spells in the form of Mystical Spew for the mirror matches. Two more copies of Narset if you really have opponents that love drawing cards. And remember that Dream Trawler? Oh yeah, she's here too. But okay, that is your sideboard. All right, ready for a match with Sparky? Just a friendly reminder before we actually start with Sparky. Remember, when you play a control deck, expect a very long, grindy game. So just as a friendly reminder, even if it is Sparky, this might take a while, guys. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get that match going. All right, everyone, here we go. Budget Azorius Control versus Sparky to show you that you don't need to spend a ridiculous amount of rares and mythics from the get-go to actually make a decent control deck. Granted, of course, I'm not a fan of control decks, but to play it fair, we're actually going to give this a try. Okay, let's see. Um, We don't have any of our major payoffs, but we do have a way to dig for cars with Cycling and Narset, so just remember that going forward. Remember, again, your deposed deploy is your how do i put it it is again your ghetto shark typhoon so don't be afraid to use it however you need to just like it you can draw a card stop somebody from doing some stuff or you can get some life gain and a couple of chump blockers let's see well it's all tap lands unfortunately so we don't really have much of a choice i would recommend though if you do get any of your tap lands out the glacial floodplain probably is going to be want to be first in case you do get your castle your castle ardenvale at least will come in untapped so that's just an fyi Hmm. If we know Sparky, obviously, they're not going to have anything we have to worry about graveyard-wise. So, Snow-Covered Island, and we'll put down the Lantern. We'll pass. I don't anticipate we're going to have to counter much of anything with the sensor, so most likely it's just going to be a card to cycle. So, we'll just do that anyway right now. All right, there you go. So remember what I just mentioned right now about the Castle Ardvale? This is exactly why you wanted the flip plane down. So at least we'll get an untapped land next turn. Ooh, and we got the Doom's card. Okay, so, hmm, how do we do this? Let's foretell it now. Tuck that away. And normally you obviously don't do this, but because this is Sparky, I can take advantage of the card draw here. Okay. So this means that next turn... Well, technically still have three mana down. We can have Narset dig out another answer. As usually, if you're playing against a creature deck, as long as you have at least a Wrath in the early going, you should be able to... You should be able to stabilize. All right, Meandering River down. Put down Narset now, because we need to dig for an answer. Ideally, we can... Okay, here we go. Teferi. Beautiful. 
There's our answer. Now, most likely your opponents, just like I'm sure Sparky's going to do right here, is going to attack Narset because card advantage is a big no-no. <laughs> Let's see, Skeleton Archer pings us. Do they go after? Okay, they go after Narset. Sometimes this is actually not bad for you if you're the control player because ideally, again, you're trying to stabilize. So it's okay to lose like something like a Narset because it buys you a turn. So sometimes your opponent has to think carefully about what they want. We can probably sponge at least one more hit here. So we're going to hold off on Doomscar for a little bit longer. Lonely Sandbar. We don't need, we don't want to cycle it this time because we want to ensure that we can get to Fairy on next turn. So with that, we can also chump block if we need to with Deploy, Dispose, if you need to, or Draw. This is going to be a much more situational option for us. So we, we got some things to do here. Let's see, do they put down another creature? More creatures down will maximize your Doomscar, which is great. Depending on, again, what kind of opponent you'll have will depend on whether or not that's a good or bad idea for you. But in this case, I think let's cycle the Neutralize. Okay, we got our Ominous Seas. So we'll just keep that. Another Soul Guy Lantern Swine. All right, this is our Doomscar turn. So first, let's just blow up the board. They're all tapped out. Bam. Awesome. Now that the board's clear, we can put down Ominous Seas. And... It's a slow, but still kind of clock for your opponent. Because I'm sure your opponent that sees this is going to be aware that we're going to be cycling a lot of our cards just to get closer to creating a Kraken. All right. Sparky wants to try to get some value out of their creatures. All right. And here we go. We're going to put down to Fairy. Tick up to Fairy. Draw your cards. Teferi may not seem like to some people that don't play Magic too often a win condition, but he is definitely going to be something that you need here. Ironically, Soul Guy Lantern would have been good to avoid Spark to prevent Sparky from actually getting back a creature. Not that it's a big deal here now, but you know what? Take down the Archer. And in case of Sparky does do anything silly, we can Soul Guy Lantern away the graveyard. All right, so this is now where you want to be as the control player. You're, you as the control player now have an advantage here where you have some options. So, for example, let's go full control. We're going to dispose, hit that, tap it, so we don't take any damage for a turn, and we get to draw a card. Puts a nice counter on our Ominous Seas. The zombie comes down, no damage for the turn, which is great. Even better, they put down their whole board. If we can get another... If we can get another Wrath, this would be even better. All right, taking up the Omnissi. Oh, there we go. See? Wrath of God. That's what you want to see. And then now that Sparky has no cards in hand, this is now just us cruising to our victory. Wrath of the board. We have the Soul Guy Lantern to prevent them from digging out any answers. Floodplane down, and we will foretell a counterspell. All right. If you untap with Teferi, for those of you that are newer to this, don't forget you always want to do your dual lands untapped. It at least gives you more flexibility if you have to cycle or do anything else. All right, and in this case, start cycling away. We want to try to look for more answers to grab. There we go. Baffling End's good. And we're almost there. Here we go. All right, another draw. There we go. Now you have a lot of answers here. Your floodplain comes down. Now that you also have Castle Ardenvale and the board is empty, you can start being much more open to just spending your mana on creating your humans. This is why I said this is nothing else. This, at least one of these is essential. Because now you have a threat. A small threat, <laughs> but it is a threat. The good news also about Ominous Seas is also your you can remove the tokens at the end of your turn. So we'll do that now to minimize any removal they might have. And now we're in a really great spot. We are in full control of the board. Most opponents in this instance probably would have given up already, but Sparky's going to hang in there, so I admire Sparky for that. You also have now a ton of cycling options here. We can literally cycle away everything if we really wanted to. Let's go attacking first. If you wanted to be greedy, you could put down another Ominous Seas, but considering that now the board's already in our favor, we're just going to cycle everything. Yeah, at this point now, you're in win more mode. <laughs> I doubt that they have any way of defending themselves. I'm sorry, Sparky. I'm so sorry. 
don't mean to bully you, but you're a good sport. But don't worry, we'll edit this all completely so you don't you guys don't have to worry about this. Some of you guys are cringing that there is a way to make a there is a way to make a budget control deck. Oh, this is just evil. All right, that's it. Zorius control in budget mode. It's still doable. All right, everybody. That's all I got for you for there. All right, let's show you the real version of Azorius Control. Now, as far as upgrades to the deck, rather than showing you individual cards, here is a complete version of Azorius Control that I can show for you. I'll point out, of course, within this, the main cards, of course, you want to focus on. This is, again, one of version that I'm using. Obviously, you're going to want to tweak yours based upon what you feel you can use and, again, whatever the, is going on in the meta. But simply put... You're going to be replacing some of your counter spells with Absorb, mainly because this will help you stabilize versus the aggro decks out there. You're going to want to replace your Soul Guide Lanterns with Grafdigger's Cage because this also will hit the current meta, which is a lot of Sacrifice and Collected Company decks. You're going to probably want to, depending on how the meta looks, you can either adjust by adding in another Wrath of God. You might be able to consider in your sideboard to settle the wreckage. Uh, as far as replacing some of your other cheaper cards like the... Ominous Seas, get those Shark Typhoons. These are much more effective. If you can get down a Shark Typhoon for full price, it just generates so much value. Usually if you can get it down, that's that's also game over. So this is your other win con besides Teferi. And as far as other things, you know, otherwise don't have to invest too much. Maybe consider ether, some Ether Gusts. Again, these are cheap, so you don't have to spend that much. But the majority of your rares and, and whatnot are going to be coming into your land base. As always, unfortunately, that's how magic goes. Your mana base is going to be where you're going to spend the most of it. So extra copies of Card Castle Ardenvale. Get a couple copies of Castle Vantress. Going to probably sideboard out some of your planes and islands to get the actual good dual lands. So Glacial Fortress, Hollow Fountains. Temple of Enlightenment is a maybe. And this is mostly what you want to adjust. I forget the name of the Kaldheim land, but if you have some of those, those also work too. The, the Kaldheim flip lands. Uh, yeah, I, sorry. The name... Miss, I, I totally have don't have the name right now. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We'll edit that back in later. As far as your sideboard, not much else really. Thankfully, the sideboard's a lot more cheaper though. Mostly, it's going to be an extra settle the wreckage, maybe another wrath. If you want to keep the dream trawler that we had in the budget version, you can keep that as well. It really just depends. One of the good things, and again, good as in quote unquote, is Azorius Control does have a lot of usable pieces so you can mix and match with some of the cheaper cards to kind of just adjust so kind of again just play around with it see what works for you and there you have it everyone budget control azores to be precise of course so you guys tell me what do you think are you actually a fan of control decks art there do you guys like this style of me trying to make cheap versions of already tier one decks out there or do you guys want me to focus a little bit more on the jank side either way let me know in the comments below i would love to hear from you guys but aside from that Thanks again for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe if I helped you out, you learned something, or at least I entertained you. And remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later.